Good morning and Happy New Year. Welcome to St. Paul United Methodist Church Service under the leadership of Reverend Dr. Richard L. Stryker III. We pray that something said or done during the service will give you peace. Good morning. Welcome to Epiphany Sunday or January 6th is Epiphany. Hope you will set time aside to celebrate that, the visit of the Magi to Jesus. On this Epiphany Sunday, even as we gather, uh, we are gathering primarily online. Due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we are resting in person for two Sundays. And we will resume our regular in-person worship on the 16th of January. So part of this service, in fact all of it you probably will experience as a pre-recorded event. Some from various parts of previous worship. Let that not keep you though from experiencing the power of the Holy, the power of Emmanuel, God with us. Again, welcome to worship at St. Paul. We want to welcome you here with us in uh, St. Paul. And we look forward to wonderful things in this new year. So we do appreciate you and thank uh, you for being with us even online. We're going to begin this service this morning with our call to worship. And it is based on Matthew 2nd chapter verses 1 through 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem's village, during Herod's kingship, a band of scholars arrived in Jerusalem from the east. They asked, Where can we find and pay homage to the newborn king of the Jews? We are very anxious to see his God in the eastern sky and are on a pilgrimage to worship him. Let us worship Christ the king. Now we'll have an offer from the uh, Man United. Thank you. 
gospel. We will be reading from Matthew, second chapter, verses 1 through 12. And I read from the New Living Translation. This is titled, Visitors from the East. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is this newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem in the land of Judea, are not least among the ruling cities of Judea. For a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people, Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route. But God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Happy New Year to you and yours on this glorious day. It is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God, we pray that you speak to us now by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Bless us in proclaiming your word, but also in hearing it. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to begin today's message with a question. What do you see? What do you see? The answer to the question of what we see or hear or sense quite often determines what we will do with our time, with our day, indeed what we will do even with our lives. I recently, a few days ago, read about a man arrested for his determination. He was coming from California driving all the way to the White House because of his perceived evil in the White House to do harm to a certain number of persons on his hit list. He was arrested and he's being held right now. While there's not any truth to what he perceived, the reality is what he saw or what he heard influenced what he was about to do. 
He was acting on it. At Epiphany, which is celebrated on January 6th, we celebrate the visit of the Magi, the wise men who came to pay homage to our Lord, Jesus the Christ. The Gospel of Matthew tells us that it came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? For we have seen his star at his rising and have come to worship him. What did the wise men see? They saw his star. And based on what they saw, they did something. They embarked upon, upon a journey that took them about two years to find the Messiah. What did they see? They saw a star that told them something specific, that there is a new king, born king of the Jews. And based on what they saw, they embarked upon a journey to find this new king. They went to the palace in Jerusalem because that is where kings are born, isn't it? God's ways are not our ways. Instead of a palace, a new king was born in a stable in an obscure village, Bethlehem. Obscure at the time, anyway. Go figure. We are likely to miss God's blessing when we look in the wrong direction or we assume one thing when it is absolutely something else. After they had heard the king, that is Herod, that is, and they had heard that the child was to be born in Bethlehem, they went on the way, and the star that they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented to him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. What did they see? They saw a Savior born to save the world. What do you see? As the Christmas carol would put it, the night wind said to the little lamb, Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb, way up in the sky, do you see what I see? A star, a star dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite, a tail as big as a kite. What do you see? Elliot Middleton saw knees in his rural community of South Carolina. So he responded to those needs by serving up his signature barbecue for free in order to feed linemen working to restore power, organizing food and supply drives for people left devastated by natural disaster, feeding students and teachers free of charge at local schools, and organizing holiday food drive. What did Elliot see? I'm going to give you an opportunity now. Let's listen to a video interview that they had with Elliot Middleton. Everyday Heroes, sponsored by Hendrick Auto Group. He's a grill master who serves up more than his signature barbecue. He's fired up to serve his community. Elliot Middleton is our everyday hero. Count on two's Octavia Mitchell has his story. It's all about sharing what you have. That's what the world should be about. Elliot Middleton, owner of Middleton's Village Barbecue, has a heart to serve communities. To help people. That's what I like doing. From serving up his signature barbecue for free to feed linemen, working to restore power, organizing food and supply drives for people left devastated by natural disasters, to feeding students and teachers free of charge at local schools, and organizing holiday food drives, Middleton stays busy. Middleton and an anonymous donor gave Thanksgiving groceries and his signature barbecue to families in need in Georgetown County. People would have gone without 
this was beyond a blessing. It was truly heartfelt, and I'm just so honored that they chose Browns Ferry. He says he focuses on rural and underserved areas to give back. He, he's an awesome guy. He's, he has a heart big as this world. Um, when he comes down to do, when he comes down to cook, he also give things away, and he really wants to serve those underprivileged areas. And you, know, you don't find that often. And so this guy is God sent. He is an everyday hero in my heart and many others. Middleton also traveled with town of Mount Pleasant leaders to Denver, Colorado to represent the town when they won the All-American City Award for their role in creating the Bridge March. Middleton says he takes his daughter along so she can see how giving back helps others. For my kids to see exactly what I'm doing as far as interacting with different communities, different people, when they grow up, they can have this contact as well, too, and the same feeling possibly to want to give back and uh, help out. It's not all about the amount that you have because, you know, you can you can give back even if you, you know, you have 100 bucks, you can share it with somebody. He says being able to help others is a blessing. It's a feeling that I get doing it. Best feeling in the world. Octavia Mitchell, count on two. That's a power of egoism. All eight of you. What did Mr. Middleton see? I tell you, he saw not only the problems in his community that called for him to respond by giving food, but he responded because he saw a need for so many people needing transportation in an area where public transport was not perfect or not excellent or hardly even available. He set up to repair some cars. Let's look at this video of Mr. Middleton, or Elliot Middleton. You may have heard reliable used cars are scarce right now and expensive, but there's a man in South Carolina who's trying to change that. Here's CBS's Mark Strassman. Elliot Middleton knows his way under a hood at his barbecue restaurant and in his yard, a cemetery of used cars. If you have a car that you think needs to go to the junkyard, contact me first. This 1990 Mercedes has more than 400,000 miles. Middleton, a trained mechanic, gives clunkers new life and new homes in South Carolina's rural low country. There's no public transportation, there's no Ubers, there's no taxis or nothing like that. If you don't have a car out here, you walk. You walk. Unless Middleton surprises you with car keys. Single moms, job seekers, older folks with doctor's appointments. 32 rehab cars since last September. Some folks don't even believe it. It's like, no, that's not my car. <laughs> Does every one of these moments give you the best kind of buzz possible? It's beyond anything in the world. His father, also a mechanic, taught him about cars and caring. Middleton gifted five cars last Christmas. This 2004 Suzuki went to single mom Jessica Litchfield. This is a lifesaver. Free of charge. What? 86-year-old John Darby gets that 1990 Mercedes. Here are the keys to it. Thank you. Turning over cars, turning around lives. Mark Strassman, CBS News, Awanda, South Carolina. How much do we love Elliot? Yes, Elliot Middleton saw his rural community needing cars to get around and he responded. He saw something and did something about it. The wise men, they saw a star. The shepherds, they saw the angels way up in the sky singing and praising. And they heard the good news of great joy. And the Middleton saw many needs and did something about the needs. What do you see for 2022, do you see, do you see a loving God? Do you see a God who is willing and ready to bless in 2022? Do you see a God of opportunity? Do you see opportunity for progress? Opportunity for advancement, opportunity for career shift? opportunity for spiritual growth. What do you see, my brother and sister? Do you see opportunity to help those in need, the homeless in our community, right here in Birmingham, Alabama, or whatever state or city you find yourself in? What do you see? Do you see opportunity to enhance our 
partnership here with School Works Music School and Greater Birmingham Ministries and maybe even Urban Ministry. What do you see? Do you see opportunity to tell the stories of the past through tourism here at the church that others may grow from it and be inspired by the stories that are told and retold? What do you see? Do you see opportunity to enhance the spiritual growth of our church, our community, through discipleship. What do you see? Do you see God doing miraculous things? Father God is able to do far more than we can even ask or things or thing or think. Pray a prayer for sight, my brothers and sisters. The song says, open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Sound and air I wait for thee, ready my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, spirit divine. Open our eyes of God that we may see opportunities to bless Others an opportunity to be blessed in order that we may be a blessing to others. What do you see for 2022? Because based on what we see will determine what it is that we do. What we see will determine how we act. What we see will determine how we behave. What we see will determine our expectation. What do you see? you were blessed by today's worship service. We encourage our St. Paul family, friends, and those looking for a church home to join us each week for our virtual church experience. Please like, share, and subscribe to our Facebook page and our YouTube channel.